What is tyrosinemia? Tyrosinemia is a genetic metabolic disease. People born with tyrosinemia cannot properly break down all their food. When a healthy individual eats food, his or her digestive system will break the food down into separate nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, minerals, and vitamins. These are then further broken down into smaller molecules that are absorbed into the bloodstream through the intestines and allow our bodies to properly function. For instance, proteins are broken down in our stomach and small intestine into smaller molecules called amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids. These are absorbed into the blood and allow us to make our own proteins to build muscles, hormones, enzymes, and more. People with tyrosinemia cannot properly break down the amino acids, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. Phenylalanine is broken down in a long chain reaction. Each step of the breakdown of phenylalanine involves a different enzyme, which helps the reaction to happen. Phenylalanine is broken down by the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase into tyrosine. Tyrosine is broken down by a different enzyme, tyrosine transaminase, into a different molecule, hydroxyphenylpyruvate. The breakdown or metabolism of phenylalanine continues with different enzymes for each step until finally it is broken down by the enzyme fumaryl acetoacetate or FAH into two molecules called acetoacetate and fumarate. The problem is that people born with tyrosinemia are missing this last enzyme. Because of this, they cannot do this last step, and so the fumaryl acetoacetate begins to build up, as do all the preceding molecules. In addition, the buildup of these molecules causes the process to go sideways and produce a toxic molecule called acetone that severely damages the liver and can soon cause liver cancer. To stop this, doctors try to stop the whole chain reaction at an earlier step so that the reaction won't proceed to make acetone. They do this by prescribing a medication called natisinone that blocks the action of the third enzyme in the pathway. It binds to the enzyme so that the hydroxyphenylpyruvate cannot be changed into homogentisate. This means that the acetone won't be produced, which is good, but the molecules above the blockage will build up. These are less harmful, but still need to be strictly limited. To make sure that these molecules don't build up too much, people with tyrosinemia must have a very different diet. They need to restrict their protein intake to only a few grams each day. Babies with tyrosinemia are fed a formula that contains a tiny bit of protein, which will give them all the phenylalanine and tyrosine that they can handle. The rest of the amino acids are added to the formula with a medical food that contains all the amino acids except for phenylalanine and tyrosine. His or her blood will be assessed regularly each week to measure levels of these amino acids in his or her blood. If needed, phenylalanine can be added to the solution to ensure that all amino acids are at a healthy level. There is a lot to consider with treating tyrosinemia, but it basically comes to these three points. First, stop the metabolism of phenylalanine with medication so that the toxin acetone isn't produced. Second, a very low protein diet is set up so that phenylalanine and tyrosine don't build up to dangerous levels, which could harm the liver, the eyes, and even brain development. Finally, people with tyrosinemia take in a special formula that give the other amino acids needed so that he or she can properly make proteins for normal body growth and function. These three treatments are lifelong, but they allow a person with tyrosinemia to live a healthy, wonderful life. Our daughter has tyrosinemia, and she is doing very well. We are very thankful.